In the last video, we covered some basics regarding the regression analysis. The linear regression model sometimes describes the relationship between two variables quite well, but sometimes it does not. We must be able to distinguish between these two cases in order to use regression analysis effectively. The standard error of estimate, which is also sometimes called as the standard error of regression, provides a good measure for testing the goodness of fit for any regression model. This statistic is very much like the standard deviation for a single variable, except it measures the standard deviation of the error term or the residual term in the regression. The formula for calculating the standard error of estimate for a linear regression model with one independent variable is given as follows. We use n minus 2 in the denominator because the sample includes n observation and the linear regression model estimates two parameters, alpha and beta. The difference between the number of observation and the number of parameters is n minus 2. Let's continue our example of predicting inflation based on money supply. The first and the second column of the numbers in the table shows the long-term money supply growth rates, xi, and the long-term inflation rates, yi, for six countries. The third column of numbers shows the predicted value of the dependent variable from the fitted regression line for each of the observations. For the United States, for example, the predicted value of long-term inflation is given as our estimate of alpha of negative 0.0003 plus our beta estimate of 0.3327 times the X or money supply for the US or 0.0653, which gives us the predicted value for inflation for the US of 0.0214 or 2.14%. The next column contains the regression residuals, which is the difference between the actual value of the dependent variable yi and the predicted value of the dependent variable or y hat. So for the United States, the residual is equal to 0.0293 minus 0.0214 or 0.0079 or 0.79%. The last column contains the squared regression residuals. The sum of the squared residuals is 0.00316. Dividing that number by n minus 2 or 4 and taking the square root of the results gives us the standard error of estimate, which is equal to 0.89%. Although the standard error of estimate gives us some indication of how certain we can be about a particular prediction of y using the regression equation, it still does not tell us how well the independent variable explains variation in the dependent variable. The coefficient of determination does exactly this. It measures the fraction of total variance in dependent variable that is explained by the independent variable. The coefficient of determination or R squared is the fraction of total variation that is explained by the regression. So R squared is equal to the explained variation divided by the total variation. The total variation is equal to the explained variation plus unexplained variation. We can rewrite this equation as explained variation equals to total variation minus the unexplained variation. Replacing the explained variation in the equation for R squared gives us R squared equals to total variation minus unexplained variation divided by the total variation, which can be rewritten as one minus unexplained variation divided by total variation. Total variation is a squared deviation from the mean for the dependent variable or y, which is the numerator for calculating the variance of y. Unexplained variation is the square deviation from the predicted value of y, which is the numerator for calculating the standard error of estimate. And as explained previously, the predicted value of y is calculated as y hat is equal to alpha hat plus beta hat times xi. In the last video, we learned how to calculate the intercept or alpha and the slope or beta coefficients. Hence, coefficient of determination is given as follows. R squared is equal to 1 minus the sum of the squared deviation from the predicted values divided by the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. Continuing our example of predicting inflation using money supply, the last column in the table shows the squared deviations from the mean and the sum of the squared deviations is 0.001809, which is the total variation. Recall, while calculating the standard error of estimate, we calculated the squared deviations from the predicted value of y, and the sum of the squared deviations from the predicted value is 0.000316, which is the unexplained variation. Plugging in the numbers in the R squared formula, we get R squared equals to 1 minus 0.000316 divided by 0.001809, which is equal to 0.825. 
So in this regression, the long-term rate of money supply growth explains approximately 82.5% of variation in the long-term rate of inflation across countries between 1980 and 2012. In the next video, we will learn how we can perform a regression analysis using Python.